when we talk about representation in the media, which people trivialize because people will say, why are you worried about this when people are dying? But people don't realize that the images that we put out about ourselves and each other informs other people and how they treat us. So when you saw the, the Emmy nominations and you, and I don't know if you saw Angelica's video, tell me in terms of your own experience, how does media affect affect you? And what, what do you think uh, can be done? Because I like to be solutions oriented in terms of improving that in the media and television, film, news, all of it. I think that in my last experience um, on a show that I was on, there was a huge resistance to tell a trans story. I pitched like seven trans stories from an authentic point of view that were undeniable. But there was always the excuse that the higher ups wouldn't want it because it was too niche. And finally, when we landed on one that was good enough, everyone responded to it. And there's just like fear that needs to be unlearned that I think we're really far away from in green lighting these stories so we could get the authentic representation on TV. And we could tell our own stories, which is something that hasn't happened for a really long time till recently with maybe pose um, and disclosure. But like, I can't think of too many stories that are told by trans folks about trans folks. And I think that's really where it starts. I think a lot of people, um, they ask, well, why does it matter? Why can't a good story just be a good story? Why does representation matter? And the thing is, is um, people who ask questions like that have never experienced uh, finally seeing someone who, who you feel is like you on TV for the first time, whether it was like a few years ago or a few decades ago. And having that character exist only to be murdered or only to have something terrible happen to them and you feeling like like that's your future that's that's the only thing that's out there for you so um, so I, I don't know i i do i feel like it, it is it is really important to have have people tell their own stories i mean up until like not that long ago there were still so many white people exclusively telling black stories and, and you know, like Latinx stories and whatnot. It's important because so much of media influences how people see other people who are not like them, especially in places where uh, people think they don't know any trans people, but they do. They just don't know anyone who feels safe enough to come out to them, you know? So the only, uh, the only idea of how trans people live and exist and, and uh, our people is is what they see on the big screen or on the small screen for so many people. There's also something that you said, Ada, sorry, Ashley, about how the conversation at, with school, and I think that a lot of it is rooted with the way we talk about gender at home and within our POC family specifically, there's this notion of what male and female is supposed to be that when you go to school you're already so repressed you don't want to express that so a teacher could hold space for that but it really has a lot a lot of the work goes at home like i i took me 37 years to this is the most visible i've been about my transness this is the first time that i'm talking about it openly so thank you for giving me this space and it took me just a few weeks ago to come out to my mother and i felt like i couldn't do that because of everything that had been instilled in me from specifically growing up in Miami and growing Latinx because I was never man enough. And like, that's just never who I was. So holding space for these kids at home is where it really starts. And I think that that's gonna be a long time of unlearning in order to get there. Ashley. I think there's a couple of pieces that I wanna go ahead and see. Like, you think you slick, Ada. That's why you wanted me to come on here. <laughs> Cause you know I'm about to cut through the shit, right? So basically, there's a couple of things. One, again, pretty much what we've said a piece of is that most of the violence we experience is because of the stories that are being told. But I think I have to go in deeper. What stories are they telling about us? You know, we're the punchline. You know, when, there, when there's like four guys in a bar and there's a cute girl, and oh, it's really a dude. You know, we think of shit like The Hangover. We think of films like The Crying Game. So basically, there's this idea that our whole existence as trans women specifically is to, uh, 
you know, that our identities are centered on our ability to satisfy a man's libido. So it's this hypersexualization. And even when we look at violence toward trans women, that isn't because a guy is attracted to us, it's because of misogyny. It's because of the idea that women in general are there for male pleasure. And so just for existing, men feel entitled, uh, cis men feel entitled to women. You know, when we think about incel culture, it's it's a lot broader than we think. And so by a trans woman merely existing, it's seen as if we're offering ourselves to them just for breathing, just for daring uh, to be visible, just for taking up space. The other piece um, is that these organizations need to do better. Everybody and their mama and their ancestor knows how I feel about Black. And I know <laughs> that this is going to shake the table a little bit because I know that this I didn't know. I watched it. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I watched this because I felt that it was my duty to support it because going back to talking about why these projects aren't greenlit and to Kai's point, we do have money, but many times the studios and these producers don't feel that there's going to be a return on their investment. And so mm. they're like, why even bother? And so even though I saw that GLAD was, it was one of their big like projects and they were a part of it, I had to push past that. But just so we're clear, when we're talking about trans identity and queer identity and which stories are worthy of being told, there's this indoctrination even in you know, um, organizations or LGBTQ media that tries to become a microcosm of the thing that we're trying to dismantle at the macro. So we give front row priority to light skin uh, Latinx folks, or we give priority to light skin Black folks, or the ones who are solely in the beauty industry. We're not um, amplifying the voices of activists and people who are actually in the trenches doing the work, not saying you can't be in Hollywood and the trenches, but the reality is that the people who are making the decisions in Hollywood, they want to settle for this watered down, mediocre, um, sanitized version of what trans identity is. My biggest dilemma isn't figuring out fucking which shade of lipstick I want to wear. It's how <laughs> to be able to leave the house in the morning and come home at night. It's not about whether or not I can fit into this dress and if this guy thinks I'm hot. It's about can I even get a job so I can have access to health care? Am mm. I going to be able to pay my rent? Am I going to have to go to bed with someone just so I can be able to, 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 to feed myself? You know? And so tying that up, I think that a lot of the responsibility and a lot of the uh, careful interrogation doesn't just fall on the cisgender community. It also falls on, on the trans community too and the LGBTQ organizations that are part of the nonprofit industrial complex that continue to um, pay attention to trans identity, but they don't want to address their anti-Blackness that overlaps with that transphobia that we see ever so pervasive in society. Yes. The intersectionality that we continue to mention but ignore all at the same time. Ser? Well, thank you so much for speaking on that, Ashley, and like, hi, and of course, like, um, I'm sorry, Henry, I, 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 this is my first time meeting you on here, so I, uh, this is an honor, though. So thank you for speaking on that and speak, speaking, you know, truth to power, really. Um, as far as like media affected me, like, I really didn't um, realize that until recently that like, you know, you piece it together throughout the time, but it's sort of like I'm, I, I like all of that media, like Kai was saying, it's like, and, and Ashley, you know, you're saying that it, it could be that you're the bad person. You're the one that, that that's going to be ridiculed. You're the butt of the joke. And, and, and it's all of these different manifestations based on the cis male gaze and their own perspective of what and ever that story may be. And so when I watch these movies, I blocked it out and I can't believe that it, and, you know, and it started, and I started on stripping that, you know, layers by layers throughout the years. And especially now with so much more trans representation and trans activists and um, being like uh, in, in contact with, and also working with and in the, in the, in the industry, as far as like how to improve it. I mean, I've been thinking about this and I go, why can't people that once you get in the room, once you have the power, once you are the star or once you have the writer that you could write, 
that says I need trans people to be involved in this production. That says that we need non-binary. We need, you know, we need a percentages of such people that we need. You know, like we need this representation of trans and non gender non-conforming people, like it behind the scenes. And not only that, why is why can't we have programs like I know that, you know, uh, there's transparent that was like doing that. I haven't worked on that pro project, so I'm not exactly sure, but it's more like say, hey, you got directors, you got, you know, those those kinds of those kinds of in unions within the industry are so hard to break into. It's like, yo, why can't it be that you hire somebody that trains somebody and gives them the knowledge? Because sometimes you can't even get into school, you can't even like you're saying that we can't even get health care. You can't get I can't even open up a bank account sometimes. Like all these things that you come across and 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 so that's something that I was kind of thinking about, uh, you know, when it comes to like, how could people uh, make a change or how do we do this? Uh, if I can't have the power, then we can find people that have the power and then maybe they could be the allies that could include us or, you know, as more people rise, they could actually say, we ha include this in our package. You want this right now, like you want this project, you know, we're pitching this to you, you want it? Well, it comes with this, this and this. At Front, at the forefront, you know, just like the Tig, uh, not Tig, the um, the Dante Gill story that was, you know, J uh, Scarlett Johansson was was uh, <laughs> didn't uh, end up making, and now it's it's uh, it's um, Our Lady J that's writing it and penning the pilot, and it and they made it that the the person that's going to be playing the the star who's Dante Gill or the story, the main character is going to be a trans man or a trans person, so it's like. That's what I'm talking about. Like now we can do this and, and we have these kind of like different ways that maybe we think, you know, how can we, you know, within the structures that we have, right? The systems, like what can we do to, 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 to bring more power into these, into these structures and to, to have more control into like, yes, trans people should be telling trans people stories, you know, um, black, you know, black people need to be telling black people stories and that kind of, you know, situation when it comes even to, to disability, like, it, I'm trying to be like, hey, I'm going to come in with my with my blind spots here. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's Afro Latinx, you know, the Caribbean, like so many different people. Maybe I leave out when I think about Latinx or or or, you know, it's the disabled. Like the fact that I don't even see or think about disabled, my ability. I do all these things. Stand, let's stand with you. Well, a lot of people can't stand like so I'm trying to do stuff of uh, like that so that I also am practicing what I preach when I say a you cisgendered people you know like what about trans people and other gendered people and, and intersex people